Among the most popular shows here on Bill Dance Outdoors are our periodic episodes in which Bill answers really good questions received from viewers and also our occasional Did You Know segments where our host provides new or little known information that he thinks will likely make your fishing better. Like silence, they also say knowledge is golden and we couldn't agree more. So today, Bill's asking once again, did you know this? That bass have only a burst speed of 12 miles per hour, whereas a sailfish has a burst of 60 miles per hour. <laughs> so if you hook one of these, I tell you what, you'd better hang on. All righty, bet you didn't know this, that fish are found at altitudes of over 15,000 feet and at depths of almost 35,000 feet and that scientists estimate that there are between 15,000 and 17,000 species of fish on Earth today compared to about 8,600 birds and 4,500 mammals. Whoa, man. <laughs> Little fat pudgy thing. A potted one. Here's a couple of interesting ones. Did you know that fish have an extremely sensitive temperature sensing system that enables them to distinguish temperature changes within a fraction of one degree? And the lateral line on each side of the fish's body is so sensitive to vibrations in the water, it permits the fish to hear low frequency sounds coming from every direction. Oh, it's fun. That is so much fun. Ooh, look at here. Come here, you pretty thing. Yeah, that's fun. It's cold, isn't it? Come here. There we go. Pretty little wintertime fish. See ya. What are you gonna do? Look at him. Where am I? Oh, I know where I am. Did you know that fish are blessed with a kind of jet propulsion? Water passes through the mouth and out the gills, giving forward thrust and a laminar flow along the body. Notice the top illustration. The curved arrows show what would happen if a fish had no gills for water passage. Water passing over the shoulders would create a turbulent flow along the body and cause drag. In the bottom drawing, water passes through the gills in a laminar flow along the body, straight arrows, with a slight turbulence near the tail and causes minimum drag. Technically, a laminar flow replaces a turbulent flow, allowing the fish to swim faster for the same amount of energy output. Ooh. Hold on, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, he's jumping in the cold weather even. Come on around here. Talking about wanting it. Okay, I gotta lean way over the side of this big old boat. There we go. Are you aware? that anglers often wonder why a fish that's hooked in deep water gives up so quickly once it's reeled to the surface. The reason is the fish rises or is reeled faster to the surface than the air in the swim bladder can be dissipated. The bladder expands and the fish basically quits fighting. You know, there's times you can fish this bait and you can jig it along and they'll hit it and other times they won't hit it when you jig it. They want you to sweep it. You just kind of sweep it along without any, you know, jigging type action. Today they seem like you, get, you need to experiment. You need to experiment. Today they seem like they want it just jigging it a little bit, just lifting it up, setting it down, lifting it up, setting it down. There's one right there. Oh yeah, look at here. Big old hard pulling bass. Hard pulling bass right there. 
Hey, pretty thing. Come back here and get you. Oh, look at the size of that. Come on back up here. Come on back. Another pretty one. Come up here. Another nice one. Yes, sir. Okay, moving along. Did you know that many fishermen wonder why some species of fish, when caught from a boat, try to continuously dive up underneath it? Well, the reason is that it's looked upon as a form of cover or protection. But invariably, they do that. Or even that, that last fish a few minutes ago, that big fish, he just went flying back up under the boat. I'd get him out and he'd go right straight back up under it. They see that darkness and it looks like cover to them, I guess. Did you know, to catch a fish, you must first catch its eye. Sound and smell may cause the initial response, but when most game fish make their final attack on your offering, they're guided solely by eyesight. Understanding the importance of eyesight in fish behavior and how fish actually see underwater can help an angler in many, many ways. There he is. Oh, another big heavy fish right there. Oh, that's a pretty one. Come on back, baby. Woo. Come on. Come here. Let me just touch you. Yes. Woo. What a fish. And he wanted it too. You know, when we think of presentation, presentation, whatever you call it, it's a mighty powerful word, but it can make all the difference in the world in catching fish or not catching fish. The fall rate of a bait, like a jig from an eighth ounce to a three sixteenth to a quarter, that's not very much. But as that thing descends or falls back in the eye of that fish, it can make a major, major difference. And I look back to fish in shallow water in the winter months, especially in the bottoms and wetland areas. And I look at the baits that I've used, light jigs like we're using right now with a plastic attractor. I've had tremendous success with tubes with no weight whatsoever. And if I added any weight to it to speak of, what would happen, it'd fall too fast and wouldn't work. A tube, for instance, moves through the water or falls through the water on a horizontal plane, and that makes a major difference. If it vertically falls, that presentation's not good, especially to inactive fish in very, very cold water. And I can remember times of fishing right here out through this flat by using a tube, and the rate of fall made all the difference in the world. Watch this. Oh, that's a good fish there. I can get him up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come up here, you big rascal. There we go. Isn't that nice? That big gut. <laughs> Looks like me, Bill. Mm, mm, mm. Pretty shaped fish. And then there was another time fishing this same bottom, water temperature in the low 40s. I tried a jig, I tried a tube, could not get a strike, and switched to a weightless little kind of a french fry type uh, bait called a knot -a worm, uh, made by Young. That day, it made all the difference in the world. Watch this. Yeah. He's going pretty fine. He's cutting up. Okay. Okay. Just don't get that cold water on me and we'll get this over with real quick. <laughs> oh, I just barely hit him hooked. 
Now I've shown you those two clips about two different lures with two different presentations. But with both those lures, if any weight was added to it, they would not hit it. Slow fall, slow presentation, and the movement of the bait, horizontally versus vertically. They didn't want an up and down type presentation. Okay, how about this one? One of the most popular bass fishing techniques to come along in the past few years is a system called drop shot. In order to make this rig most effective, the hook needs to stand out 90 degrees from the main line. And it certainly does with the new Gamakatsu swivel shot. If it sags, strikes will be missed. Now what I really like about it, it totally eliminates line twists, sags, and vastly improves rigging efficiency. Another unique feature is the easy change weight system below the hook, which improves rigging efficiency and easy leader length adjustments without retying your rig. The hook is an offset point octopus and strong enough to lift your bass boat out of the water. Well, maybe not that strong, but strong enough and sharp, and it comes in sizes from two to three off. Heavy fish right there. Yes, sir. Woo wee. Come on up here, big mama. Yeah, boy. That one right there is a chunk. Oh, my gosh. Come on. Ain't going up under the boat. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Come on back, baby. Woo! Come on. Come here. Let me just touch you. Yes. Woo! What a fish. And he wanted it too. Way back in there. Look at that. Yee! Baby's as fat as I am. Not a nice fish. Wintertime, anytime. Yes, yeah, sir. Boy, you are pretty. Watch him. Here's a good one. If you're having trouble backing up your trucking boat, well, here's a couple of things that'll make things a whole lot easier. First, try learning to use your side mirrors. And second, place your hand on the bottom of the steering wheel. When you move your hand to the right, the trailer's gonna go right. Move it to the left, and the trailer's gonna go left. Most who have problems backing up put their hands on top of the wheel. This disorients you with the way the trailer responds. There you have it. We sincerely hope you learned something in today's Did You Know episode that'll make your fishing more enjoyable and productive. If so, be sure to share it with others. And please join Bill right here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.